Focus on the feeling of the breath. And then talk to yourself by the breathing. What's there to say? Well, now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. Next question is, is it comfortable? Does it feel right for the body right now? You can check, you can try different kinds of breathing. And John Lee recommends starting out with some deep, long breathing to wake things up inside. And as long as that feels refreshing, keep it up. Because a lot of us go around with depleted oxygen levels to begin with, so we need to up the oxygen. But the important thing is how you talk to yourself about this, about the possibilities of working with the breath. The benefits are going to come. In any case of delayed gratification, you've got to talk to yourself well. Remind yourself, okay, you're giving up some immediate pleasures right now. You could be thinking about anything you wanted to think about, but you decide, no, I'm going to focus on the breath. And even though the breath, the first time you breathe in, breathe out, may not be all that refreshing. You trust that it's going to get better. You've had some experience already. So a lot of this depends on how you talk to yourself about this. You see examples of children and little animals getting really upset when mommy or daddy goes away just for a little while. Because what are they telling themselves? Total abandonment. They don't realize yeah, the, the parents are planning to come back. It's because they don't know how to talk to themselves that they suffer. Well, this habit sticks with us. It's not just little kids and little animals. Adults don't know how to talk to themselves either, in most cases. They picked up all kinds of ideas from who knows where. And oftentimes just something comes bubbling up in the mind randomly, takes over your life. So you have to learn how to talk to yourself. Realizing that giving up certain immediate pleasures that entail a long-term pain is really worth it. And although you may not appreciate it right now, you learn how to get some pleasure out of the fact that you're rising above the tendency to go for what's going to be harmful in the long term. In other words, just talk to yourself in a way that provides happiness and keeps you directed in the right direction. As John Lee once said, of the various kinds of fabrication, verbal fabrication is a big troublemaker, how you talk to yourself. But it can be turned around. It can be a big help. Think about the Buddha. All those many times in this, the course of his quest for awakening, he ran up against a dead end. He went to these teachers and they promised him the end of suffering. Well, they didn't have it. You could see that. He tried torture, self-torture. That didn't work either. What was there left? He figured there must be a way around this. There have been Buddhas in the past. They must have figured this out. And it's because there's confidence that there was a way out, that he could find it. So a lot of that had to do with how he talked to himself. So look at the way you're talking to yourself especially at times when the mind's starting to get upset about something. Stop and ask yourself, can you talk to yourself about this in a different way, a way that's more skillful? And if nothing else, fall back on the breath. Because if you can talk to yourself well about the breath, you can get a lot of advantage out of just simply being with the breath, gaining strength, gaining stability inside. And it's the talking to yourself that eventually becomes one of the factors of jhana, and the jhana gets you really settled well. And that's when you start saying, oh yes, there is some pleasure in, in this practice. It was worth all the effort to get here. And once you're here, of course, why leave? Try to maintain that sense of well-being with the breath as you go through the day. It may not be as intense as you're out walking around, but it keeps you in touch. So the next time you come to sit down and meditate, you're right here. It's in this way that your happiness becomes a skill.